I'm going to let the earth pull on these two objects and let them fall. Now the first thing that uh, strikes my uh, attention, in fact the one kind of waves back and forth as it moves downward. Now what is it that's, that's causing that thing to kind of move back and forth that way? It's undoubtedly the uh, friction that it experiences as it encounters the air in the room. The air is exerting a force on this object and we'd have to conclude that that force exerted by the air is a significant one in determining the motion. Now the thing that I wanted to do was to see how objects moved when the only significant force was the force of gravity. But if I have a second significant force acting on the piece of paper, that destroys my ability to see how gravity itself uh, affects the motion. So I'm going to have to restrict myself in these little experiments that I'm going to do to situations where I believe that any force of friction is insignificant. If I drop the book, there's undoubtedly some kind of air friction there, but it's insignificant. The significant force causing the acceleration downward is just the force of gravity. If air friction is a problem, you can fix that in the following way. If you put the paper on top of the book and allow the book then to run interference for the piece of paper so that the air friction on the piece of paper is now insignificant, then you observe that both of the objects hit the ground at the same time. Which is to say, both of the objects accelerate downward with exactly the same acceleration which does not depend upon the mass, since they have quite different masses.